Nature is taking its revenge on the stone and concrete of Paris. At the heart of the capital, lush vertical gardens are creeping up and slowly enveloping the facades of several buildings. We finally found this real link between the environment, man who lives in it, and nature which blossoms. We're putting greenery back into the object. We are asked to make some fairly extraordinary things, and that's when the field of possibilities becomes wide open. In the 13th arrondissement of the city, the front of this hotel is getting ready to put on its new coat of greenery. The plants are already waiting on the rooftop. The man behind the whole project is the world-renowned botanist Patrick Blanc, the inventor of the vertical garden. Here you can see the plants as they are when they arrive. Some of them have fairly big pots, but lots of little ones, as you can see here. That's really perfect because it means we can just take off the pot, remove a bit of the excess soil, and pop them directly into their pockets. What's really pleasing to see here is this iris. It's a Nada iris that's already in flower. It's truly one of those extraordinary plants that thrive anywhere, in full sunlight, in the darkest shade, in dry conditions and humid ones. This is something fun which comes from the south of the United States. It's a climbing aster. It comes into flower from November to February. A vertical garden, especially in a town, has a base which feels like being in the undergrowth of a forest, while the top feels like being high up on a cliff, exposed to the wind. That's why I only choose plants which always grow on rocks or at the base of tree trunks, or on really steep slopes like cliffs, for example. In order for these plants to grow vertically, they're first placed inside pockets made of felt, which are watered by a special irrigation system. The roots divide and the plants become established. They draw the water and the nutrients out of the fabric. It's an idea that Patrick came up with when he was younger. He was fascinated by tropical plants and aquariums, passions that led him to invent the vertical garden. It's an art form that he's constantly reinventing in his studio, which is also where he lives. I'd read in a German review that the best way to purify the water in an aquarium is to soak the roots of a philodendron or other plants that have aerial roots in the water of the aquarium, whilst keeping the plant above the water. So I took a cutting of a philodendron from my mother. I noticed the roots were growing really well in the water. The fish loved hiding amongst the roots. So I put more and more above the aquarium, and suddenly the wall above the aquarium became this space to fill and to conquer. In 2006, Patrick Blanc's collaboration with the French architect Jean Nouvel turned him into an internationally recognized designer overnight, thanks to his most impressive creation, the vertical garden at Paris's Quai Branly Museum. Since then, he's worked on a slate of projects across the globe, like this museum in Madrid, this school in San Francisco, or this shopping center in Sydney. Nowadays, I mainly work far away from Europe. At the moment, I'm working once again with Jean Nouvel on a huge project on two towers in Kuala Lumpur. They're the world's highest vertical gardens, growing at a height of 200 meters. I think there are really no limits. Ever since its invention, the vertical garden has become somewhat of a French speciality. And nowadays, they don't just feature on the outside of buildings. 36-year-old Amaury Gallon is using them indoors as well. It has a relaxing quality. People feel better when there's greenery around. They are less sick and less stressed. There is really a great desire to incorporate greenery into living spaces in general. Along with his team, Amaury continues to push the boundaries of the world of botany. His latest mission is green design, like this prototype lamp, which contains natural moss. It's in the shape of a droplet. 
And in this droplet, we've tried to recreate the design of a simple cell. We have created these little sockets which allow the light to pass through and which, above all, give the whole thing a really organic feel. What's interesting is that it allows us to create lots of different looks. You can imagine a ceiling filled with these green lamp droplets or these famous trees. It's the tree that you see in the middle of everything and then we hang these lights on the inside. Some of his green creations take several months to complete, like this baobab tree made from bamboo. So here you have some moss and here some lichen. And here we have a very pink and well-preserved flower. You can see that it has kept its flexibility just like the lichen that's also still supple. They're all natural, but they're plants which are no longer growing. We put glucose inside them. It's a sugar, but a liquid one, if you like. It runs into the sap, allowing the plant to keep its exact same appearance for 10 years, without needing any water or light. So we have this special expertise and we're trying to bring technology into the mix to make what's normally impossible, possible.